Collapsible is a feature used to describe the ability to hide and show a block of content through clicking on another element. As a standard UI UX design website, this will always be a must-have feature. Usually to create this function, we must use JavaScript. But few people know that HTML already supports us and creating this feature can be created in a much simpler way without using JavaScript. Let's look at the following example. In the website, I create two elements, box one and box two. I want when the user clicks on box one, box two will hide or appear. Case one, if I have to use JavaScript, you need to recall these two elements through document. Then by default, change the display state of box two to none to hide it. Catch the user click event on box one, then run a function. In this function, change the display value of box two to block to display it. That's not enough. Box two must be hidden when clicking on box one element one more time. So in this function, we must check the current status of box two first. If box two is displayed, we will hide it. Otherwise, if box two is hidden, it will be displayed. So that's how we use JavaScript to create the collapse function. So now let's see the second way, the way without using JavaScript. That's the same example. I need to hide and show box two element when the user clicks on box one, but no need for JavaScript. I will wrap both box one and box two in a parent element named details. This is a valid element of HTML that can be used on all browsers and devices. When using details, all elements inside details will disappear. Instead, a line of details appears. Clicking on it will cause the hidden content to appear and vice versa. But isn't that right? The problem requires that the box one element must be displayed to be clickable. So now put the element you always want to be displayed in an element called summary. Then box one element will always be displayed on the screen. When clicking on box one, the remaining content not in the summary will be hidden or displayed accordingly. So a collapse function was created immediately without much processing. But because we don't need to do anything, can we customize more? For example, normally by default, box two will be hidden and only appear when the user clicks on box one. So what if I want box two to be displayed by default? Don't worry, if you want that, just add open right into the details tag. At this point, box two is displayed by default. Of course, when the user clicks on box one, it will hide again. So obviously, instead of having to use JavaScript, we can create this feature with just HTML. Not only that, we don't even need to do any processing. It's great, right? Basically, this is its operating principle. So how do we actually apply this feature, design and customize it so that it looks beautiful and best for the user experience? So let's look at the following examples of real life projects. Usually, icons placed at the top of the page have a common function. For example, the user icon will be used to navigate to user related pages or functions. Websites with user-friendly UI and UX design will often insert a small menu here. Includes three navigation options, profile, settings, or logout. And of course, this small menu only shows when the user clicks on the user icon. So applying what we learned growing up, I put the entire menu and user icons in the details tab. Since the user icon will be displayed by default, I'll put it in the summary tag. And here's what we learned in the last three minutes. But in fact, if that's all, people should notice that every time a submenu appears, neighboring elements will also be moved into position and destroy the original design. That's when we need to use CSS to customize the design of this feature so it works best. Now in detail, I use position relative to be able to position it. This time the UL submenu uses position absolute then this menu will be moved based on the parent element without affecting the position of other elements. See? Now when I open the menu, the other elements don't move around anymore. I keep editing the CSS. This menu will be 100% right. List style none to hide the black circles in front of the menus. With max content, white background, border radius 5 pixels. For each item lap, padding 5 pixels and 15 pixels, Cursor pointer to create a hand effect when the user hovers over it. When hovering. The background of the lie tags will be changed for emphasis. It looks so beautiful, right? The only problem is that 
By default, there will be a triangle icon appearing here. Let's see what it is. Turn on Impest, click on it. Go inside the details. Inside the summary tag, this triangle is the masker attribute. To hide the icon placed in the summary's masker, then add the summary element. You just need to add list style none. So we're done. Similarly, if you want to create a secondary submenu of settings, then I create a details tab, put the settings in summary, and the secondary submenu is placed next to it. And this is our result. A multi-level menu has been created without using a single line of JavaScript. Now we will come to the second example, which involves creating a series of collapses, how it will work. Every e-commerce website will always include a lot of cart tags to display product lists. In addition to the See More button, I wanted to create more options, but there wasn't enough space. So I immediately thought of creating a collapse function to expand more options. First in the cart tag, I insert a bar icon to indicate that the user can click to see more options. Just below is a menu of other options. It can be add to cart, question, and report. To make it look better, I insert an icon for each choice. Now to create the collapse feature, I again use the HTML details tag. Put the bar icon in the summary tag. And of course, there's not just one cards, which will have a lot of cards here after creating a lot of cards. Now I will go through CSS to do the rest. First, I will edit the summary tag to make it beautiful and synchronized with the see more button next to it. List style none to remove the front triangle. One pixel border. With max content. Padding five pixels and 15 pixels. Rounded four corners, 10 pixels. Cursor pointer to create a hand effect when hovering over. Next, to ensure that the menu does not change the position of neighboring elements when it appears, I add position relative to the details element. As for the menu, it will use position absolute. Zero away from bottom. 130% left. White background. Border with size one pixel. Box shadow to create a raised effect from the surface. List style none. Padding 10 pixels. Border radius seven pixels. For inner menu lead tags, fixed width 160 pixels. Border radius 5 pixels. Black letters. Cursor pointer. Use display grid to divide columns. The content inside will be divided into two columns. The icon is 20 pixels. The rest belongs to the text. The height of each column is 40 pixels. The distance between columns is 10 pixels. Justify content center to align horizontally. Align item center to align the element vertically. Padding left and right 10 pixels. Text align left. Transition to specify the time to create the effect when the user hovers the mouse over it. Then, I change the background color and text color to emphasize the lead tag being hovered over. It's great, right? Now, every time I click on the button bar, the additional menu of each item cart will appear. But with this much collapse, a problem often arises. That is when I click on the bar icon of the last cart cart, the menu will still appear but now it has fallen off the screen. Yes, the main problem is this. When creating a series of similar collapses, but because the items are in different positions, the visibility of the menu inside is affected. When encountering these problems, we are forced to recalculate with CSS, is the current list of products divided into three columns, and the items in the third column are affected. So, only for items in positions divisible by three. I changed some position alignment properties to help it solve the problem. If not aligned to the left half, I will unset it. Then set the right distance to zero pixels because the menu covers the bar icon and products tag. So I unset bottom again. That's it, everything is working great now. And that is the collapse function using HTML in this video.
before the end of the video. I will guide everyone to add an interesting tip with this feature of HTML. In CSS, we can easily catch the collapse's open event to customize the interface as desired. For example, when the user clicks on the bar icon to open the menu, I will catch this event through square brackets. Now I will change the color of the bar icon to orange. So from now on, when the menu opens, the icon bar will be orange, but when closed, it will return to its original color. So that's all the content I want to share with everyone in this video. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to continuously be updated with many interesting videos related to programming and web design. My channel continuously releases useful videos about web programming and code sharing completely free of charge. Finally, how do you feel about this feature? Please leave your thoughts and let me know. Thank you everyone and see you in the next video.